Uh, hello? Oh, hey, Chris, bro. You all right, man? Hello, man. How you doing? I'm all right, man. How are you getting on? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm good. I'm good. Can good. you, is my vote, is my mic all right and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you fine, man. You're coming, all, you're coming through all right, man. All right, sweet. Yeah, I'll just, because I'm using my headphones, so I don't know. Yeah, that's I cool. Don't know that, should, that should, um, that should be fine. But gross, bro. It's, it, gross, bro. It's great to sit down with you, man. I know we've spoken a few times on socials and stuff, man. Like, yeah. yeah. How you been getting on? All right? Like, everything all right? I've been good. I've been good. I feel like this latest lockdown's a bit, a bit probably the hardest one yet mentally mm. like the first in like march and like last year i was kind of enjoying lockdown because i was just because my job was just making music like it was just basically an excuse not to get a job and just like make music for months <clears throat> so that's what i did but then this lockdown just just crushed me mentally like before before this corona i was completely fine like mentally and stuff but i feel like this covid's given me given me mental illness so, uh, so that's where I'm at right now. Oh, but sorry to hear that. You know what? I'm... No, that's fine. It's fine. I'm getting better. Though. I'm getting better. Like recently, I've started recording again and getting back into the swing of things. So, it's all it's all going well. And the end is the end is in sight. So, it's all good. It's all good. How have you been? Good man. You know what? Like I I I think just me. Like I've just tried to be creative and productive as much as possible. Like you know, doing these interviews yeah, on Zoom. Yeah. It's been really cool. Like, I meet people like yourselves, you know, like I've never never really spoke to before. I've been networking a lot online, but at the same time, like, I miss gigs. I miss going out and networking, yeah. going to shows. Like, it's just, I think for me as, like, a presenter and stuff, it's been such a good time and a bad time, but good time because, like, I can message someone like you or someone that's quite hard to contact, like, labels and things like that. I've been in touch with a few, like, labels sending me music just because, like, people are more open to, like, collaboration and talking and people are more vulnerable because like if I drop someone a message saying do you want to do an interview they're gonna say yeah because they're not really doing any shows or anything so like for me I can yeah, yeah, yeah. use it as an advantage and I think I've tried to use this time to like better myself like I've done a few courses I've done a few like different you know collaborations online I've tried to do my you know been doing my radio show you know stuff yeah. like this so it's, it's 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 good and it's bad but I mean as well like for me mentally is kind of a bit testing because like there's a few days where like well my sleeping pattern's all over the place like I wake up in the middle of the afternoon I go to bed at like 4am but I'm still getting stuff yeah done. getting all my uni work done I'm still doing all my editing that I need to do all my like track you know things like that putting tracks together and for my show and things like that so like I still I'm still being creative it's just like it's just a weird time in it it's just so surreal like it doesn't seem it kind of feels like we're in this bad dream and we keep waking up and it's like, can't go out. And... Yeah, but I'm yeah. excited for it to be over. Because I've never, I started making music like last September, like 2019. So I haven't even played a show yet. So, so once uh, this stuff's over, I'll be able to finally play a show. So that's what I'm looking forward to most. That's keeping me, keeping me motivated. Yeah, man, I bet, I bet that'll be a good moment for, you know, like the first ever show and. Hopefully I can be there, man. I'd love to see that go. Yeah, that'd be that. sick. Because it's good, because I didn't... Obviously, when I started making music, I got offered, a, like, before COVID in, like, February and stuff, I got contacted for, like, shows. Like, people were like, do you want to play here? And I'd, like, agree to all of them. So it'll be it'll be interesting to play my first show where a lot of people there already know I am. Like, I'm kind of lucky in that regard. Like, I don't have to play shows to, like, two people who don't even know who I am. Do you know what I mean? To get <laughs> yeah. so... The awkward few really small shows I'm avoiding, which I'm kind of happy for. <laughs> yeah. I think sometimes like artists they get in this thing where like, oh, I've got to I've got to do the dead shows before I get big. Like, nah, like if you can get a show and you get it packed out on your first show, like go for it. Like, don't feel like you have to do the dead shows. If you can book a show, obviously you want people to see your music, don't you? It's like with me, I did my first ever gig as a promoter like a couple of years ago. And you know, like I'd done this maybe my third event and I was like, oh, it's going to be dead. It's going to be dead. And then all of a sudden, yeah. got loads of people come in and I was like, this is sick. So like, it's a nice feeling, man. And I hope, hope the show goes well and you smash it and I'm sure you will. I mean, like your yeah, style of I'm music, excited. I just want to like talk about it. Cause like, it's, it's music that I love. Like I love, cause you, how would you describe it? Cause it's kind of like that sort of, 
it's like punk mixed with rap i'd say so how would you describe your music style to anyone that's not really listened like so like, i'd say like know. in terms of who i sound most like it's kind of hard to put a finger on but i'd say obviously in the vein of like artists like lil peep and like juice world post malone kind of thing but what i'm what I, when I started, those are like my big inspirations, but I'm trying to kind of British, Britishize it in a way. Like I'm trying to make it as British as possible without getting too like corny. Do you know what I mean? Without being proper, like I'm a fucking like go, you know what I mean? Like, Jay, yeah. like Arctic Monkeys kind of thing. Well, they nailed it, but I'm trying not to make it like overly British, but just stay true to who I am and use my accent. But I'd say kind of like, I mean, I guess it's in the vein of like emo, emo rap, but I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really call myself a rapper at all. Like, I don't really think I rap in any song. So I don't know, emo, emo pop, I, I don't know, punk pop. <laughs> I guess it's not pop punk, but I don't know. It's kind of hard to, because I haven't fully established my like hard sound yet. I'm still experimenting a little bit. So I'd say emo, emo rap or that kind of thing is probably best. Best way to describe me at the moment. I'd well, say. I mean, like it's it's such a popular genre. Like it had that massive surge with like XX Tashian. You know, you mentioned Juice World. You rest in peace. You know, both to both of them, and and you know, Little Peep as well. Rest in peace as well. You know, like like that. You know, I remember Little Peep coming out, and I, at the time, I was kind of being a bit of an old head, and I was like, oh, what is this? And then I listened to it, and I was like, listen to it again and again and again. I actually really started to appreciate his work. And it's like, whoa, this yeah. is like, you can tell this dude, like, he's not just some guy that's just, you know, picked up rapping. He's he's obviously listened to a lot of, like, punk bands back in the day. He's listened to a lot of, like, Blink-182. Blink and over time, I've started to love this genre. And I've always been a rock fan and a, and a, a metal fan and things like that. Because when I, th I think when people meet me as a DJ, they think I'm just like, oh, you always just rap. But I actually, I love a cross-genre of music. So, but this this, you know, type of genre that you're doing... I listen to your work, man, and it's really, really, like, refined. Like you said, like, you can tell you stand out because, like, it's got that British accent. And it's like, when I listen to it, I was like, damn, this is like, it's like, this guy's got a really solid, like, British accent, which is really cool on this type of music yeah, yeah. I've really heard before. So, they got man. But that's the kind of music that I was inspired by. Like, I think that's what kind of drew me to this type of music. I was never really into hip-hop at all growing up. I was into, like, like, when I was really young, I was kind of into, because I used to play guitar when I was a kid, so I was kind of into like ACDC, Led Zeppelin and stuff. And then when I became like a teenager, I like got into my big metal phase. Like I was heavily into like Slipknot and all those kind of bands. And then when I got into like 16, 17, I got into like, um, yeah, I guess like not pop punk, but kind of like post-hardcore emo kind of music. There was like a bit underground, at the, like bit underground music bands like American Football or like brand new I don't know if you've heard of those but and then so I was kind of into like the underground UK hardcore scene and then I just wasn't into hip-hop then I went to uni and all ever anybody ever listened to was hip-hop so I kind of had to listen to it and then I one day I just found like found little people on YouTube and I was like this is this is everything I want from music like it's got that kind of like emo melody and like guitars and that's my favorite thing and then it's also got that kind of hip-hop swagger like the lyrics are like this makes me feel cool but I'm also listening to emo music do you know what I mean mm -hmm. so I had everything I wanted and then from then on that's all I listened to from uni it's just like that big that sound wave sound cloud wave of like x peep juice all those guys so and then in like the, when I finished university I was like you know I'm just gonna make that music and so that's when that's when I started making music properly but I was in a few because I was in a few like Pop, pop punk bands when I was like 14, 15, 16. So I played guitar in like a few pop, I wouldn't say we're pop punk, but kind of like, yeah, punk bands. And then I played drums in like a metal band. So I was always into that kind of music. So when those two musics crossed over, musics, when those two genres of music crossed over, that's when I was like, this is what I want to do. This is the music I want to make. So yeah, those artists were pretty big, big for me in that, in that sense. It's interesting, man, because like, yeah, like I love, I love that you know, like I love that there's like an alternative to hip hop sometimes because like I think people that don't necessarily mm -hmm. like hip hop as a genre can relate to some of like you know Little Pete's work and things like that. So it's yeah, cool exactly. That, yeah, it's cool that people can find like a 
because it's you know like post malone like he's revolutionized music i think he's totally changed what you know an artist can be and what how they can look and how they can dress and like little peep did that xx tashi and you know like how people dress and things like that it's just people yeah. getting creative with fashion and things like that which i think is really important and yeah man like all great it's like xx tashi and like he's got so much work out there like it's insane how much like songs i've just listened to him that i've just found like even some of his older stuff sounds a bit yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And things like that i mean with you like one thing i noticed was like you were wearing like i think you had like a ballet you had like a green ballet you wear quite a lot of like punk tops and things like that and you've got like green yeah, tops. Yeah. like just describe like your image then as an artist like really uh well the the ballet club came well basically i used to be i used to be a producer uh like making hip-hop beats for people and i didn't really take it that seriously like i got do you know who coiler ray is Mm. she's like a female female uh rapper from america and she i got like my biggest placement was with her but the song never came out and i just kind of i used to be called young milk so if anyone listens to this remembers the <laughs> og days and that's a shout out to them but um and then i started making like lo-fi hip-hop kind of songs uh and then i changed my name to gross boy as a producer like, i never thought i was gonna be i always wanted to be like a artist but I didn't have the balls to do it do you know what I mean mm. I was always too scared of what people would say or stuff so the but I guess the ballot lover kind of came from that a little bit I just want kind of wanted as an image as my producer as a producer I know that doesn't sound didn't really make much sense at the time but but then since then I just carried it on like I don't use it use that too much but I carry it on just as a little just as a little cool thing do you know what I mean looks cool that's bitch pretty much it but in terms of aesthetics i don't really like really wear i don't really have enough money to but i wouldn't really wear those kind of like designer clothes that all these americans wear and stuff like that like i've always worn kind of just like jeans and a band t-shirt that's like what i've worn since i was like 12. so i'm not really i don't really feel the need to like create like an image like i'm sure it would help me like you see these big artists pop off with like their crazy hair and like their tats all over their face and stuff. I'm sure that would help. Like I know A and R's probably look at that and be like, we can market this guy. But for me, it's just I don't know. I just like I just like to look like a like I've always looked. But so there's no real thought going into my image at all. But I rate, I rate that man. I rate the fact that you just you seem like you you yourself. Do you know what I mean? You're not trying to yeah be someone you're not, which is which is respect. Yeah, that's also how it feels. Like, I don't want to. Because I, I feel my, like, when I first started making music, like, there's that big kind of worry that your friends are going to be like, what the fuck? Like, your friends are going to, I don't know, like, tease you or shit? I don't know. So I would never have really gone like, oh, I'm going to dress, like, with this crazy outfit on and, like, dye my hair. Because all my friends know that's not really who I am. So I'd feel like it would be pretty inauthentic if I started doing that stuff. And all the artists I like are just, eat, like, it doesn't, I don't really care about their look. Obviously, Little Peep's look was sick but a lot of like the old emo bands and stuff I listen to like aesthetics has never really been anything important to me so I thought I'd just just be me and see what happens mm. it's interesting because like you listen to like punk music from the 70s I actually did like some research on this just for like uni and maybe not your genre but like what's happening with like drill music and sort of the music coming out of the yeah. UK some of the music they tried to ban punk music because they thought it was dangerous and things like that they're trying to do that with a lot of the genres now. So it's yeah. interesting. Like you can't really compare the music because the music's completely different in sound. But sort of like you look at the social aspects of I don't well, know. What do you I'm think about that? that? Do you mean like people say ban drill because it's gonna lead to violence and stuff like that? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. What's your what's your opinion on that kind of stuff? For me, someone that's worked with drill artists and has sort of pioneered that kind of sound, like I feel like for me, with them young, with these young men, it's like an expression for them. So it's a lot like how people can come on, they can rap, they can, you know, express themselves on a record. It's like therapy, isn't it, for a lot of people, music. So I think for them, yeah. banning it is, I think for me personally, that's wrong. Um, but yeah, like even with punk music, they were, they were trying to do that. And me, like punk music, it's something that I've kind of dabbled in. It's not something that I'm a massive expert in, but like I've, I've seen yeah. a few yeah. hits heard a few songs and I know a few bands I couldn't name all the bands but I know like there's Sex Pistols there's you know there's a few French punk guys that I've listened to and things like that it's not 
I mean, I noticed in your bio you said you like the Smiths. I know that's... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was, like, the first band I ever loved. Like, when I was, like... I, my sister used to be, like, a Morrissey fanboy. Obviously not anymore, but she used to, like, be obsessed with the Smiths. Always wear Smiths T-shirts and have Smiths posts on the wall. And then one day she gave me, like, the Smiths' greatest hits. And I remember I, like burned not burnt it ripped it onto like my <laughs> shitty little mb3 player at the time and i went on holiday with my mum and that all i listened to was the smiths and that was the, i think that was the first time that i really like thought lyrics are like the most important thing in music and that's kind of stayed with me like when i love the song the lyrics have to be good i can't really be listening to music where the lyrics don't mean anything do you know what i mean like lyrics are like a huge part of why what music I enjoy and what I don't. So, yeah. So, the Smiths did that for me, definitely. Mm. You know what, bro? I've got a bit of a story myself with the Smiths. My mum, like, she she hates Morrissey. Like, I like the Smiths. I think they're cool. Like, they're a cool band to listen to. But my mum absolutely hates them. And every time I put it on, I put it on just to, like, annoy my mum. And I remember one yeah. Christmas I bought her a Morrissey CD just to, just to like, joke with it oh, yeah <laughs> but um, i remember there's another time my granddad was watching the smiths um you know rest his soul he was watching the smiths with my dad and they came on and my granddad was just like what is this it makes you it makes you it makes you ashamed to be called a smith that was his last name <laughs> smith, so. but for me oh, like, I see. yeah i think at the time like that the older generation there's a few people that don't really like them but like, i think they've become like a cult band where like a lot of people are yeah into, definitely are into them but i rate them like i like morrissey like i think I think what they were doing and like it's you know it's it's very influential music there's that one album with the guy I can't I can't quote the album but it's the guy I think he's in like an army suit it's like a helmet it's me is murder that is that's the one that's a very good album I've listened to that one very good album yeah and I feel like Morris obviously nowadays Morrissey's a bit of a bit of a dick like he's very his politics is pretty pretty disagreeable but at the time, like that was the first music I found where it was a man being like super vulnerable, and like it wasn't there wasn't any like he wasn't trying to be cool, he wasn't trying to be tough or like say anything good about himself. He was just being like completely vulnerable, and like for me that was the first time I'd ever heard like a musician or a band kind of sing like that and sing those type of lyrics. So that was like that was the reason I just fell in love with them personally. Mm interested you mentioned the word vulnerable because sometimes yeah like people don't always speak on their feelings do you and like I, this is where I'm going to move into like your EP all I have will fall apart like I really liked it man it was really mellow and it I had a good you know I just rinsed it I kept listening to it back over and over again and it's a very Thank you. good piece of work man it's, it's, it's you're all right man it's 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 good that like I just feel like a lot of the lyrics and the stuff you were talking about obviously a lot of it was for my interpretation anyway, a lot of it was about love, I'm guessing. A lot of it was about your experiences and things like that. And for my favourite yeah, yeah. song was True Romance. I loved that one. That was probably the, the yeah. one that I listened to the most. Just talk about your EP, man, EP man, and what's that really all about? <clears throat> so when I started making music in September, um, I had no plans on really making a project. I was, I was in the mindset of, like, just keep making singles and one of them will get big kind of thing but then my my this guy who's my producer now sean shout out sean she's listening he uh he's in an old band he was in a band and he found my music and he he was like can i be your producer like so basically we agreed that he's going to produce all my music and we'll split it and just work together as a team and then he was like have you thought about doing a project and i was uh, i was quite hesitant at first but after a while i thought you know i'm gonna make like a six track ep that and I want to be proud of like every little second on there because I don't want to make an album and have like four good songs and then like six songs I don't really care about so the intention was just to go in and make six singles and then put them as an EP and in terms of in terms of the songs like I'm trying to think so Forever and Always was the first one we wrote for the EP and that was like once I wrote that we were so excited we were like this is going to be fucking amazing this EP and so that's that's probably my favorite song actually actually but all my songs all the songs I love but um and then we kept going and then True Romance was kind of I wanted there to be like one fun kind of song on it like one kind of like you can imagine this like people partying kind of thing 
uh, and just kind of a bit ignorant lyrics, just kind of like fuck it, let's party kind of thing. But with I want it to have like a like a deeper meaning in the verse and stuff. And then we just yeah, so I I just wrote the whole EP in my room uh, at home during lockdown. I recorded it all in my room, and then um, the last track, Cave In with Fraser. The EP was done. It was supposed to be five tracks. And then I just found this acoustic beat online and I just started singing to it. I was like, I need this to be on the EP. So like two, three weeks, maybe like four weeks before the EP was sent off to be distributed, I was like, I just need, I just need a little acoustic song on there. Because I've written loads of songs since that are acoustic songs and I wanted to kind of diversify the sound a little bit. I didn't want it all to just to be, you know, upbeat or like just like trap. I don't, I don't know, just like those kind of beats. I wanted there to be some variation on there. So I went with a little acoustic track and that actually turned out to be the best, most, most listened song on, on the EP. So I was quite shook, shook, shocked by that. So since then I've gone, written. I've got about four or five acoustic songs in the bank now. So nice. each project from now on is going to have a few little acoustic, little sad boy acoustic ballads on there for the people to dig their teeth into. And yeah, the rest of the album just kind of, I wrote the album in about a month, but it took a long time to, record and produce it and stuff like that because my producer was working as well so yeah that's about it really I mean this year I'm, I'm working on another project now actually we'll, I'll talk about this at the end but um but yeah that's basically the the work behind the EP and then the music videos with the EP obviously I couldn't meet this was when the uh Covid was like really bad and like lockdown was like proper strict and stuff. it still is, but this is when everyone was taking it as proper seriously. So I couldn't record any music videos. So I had to get my trusty girlfriend to shoot my music for, music for me in my garden. Nice. Uh, and those went down well. So yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the EP. Solid. It's a solid EP, man. I mean, Cave In, I know you mentioned that towards the end. That, that is a deep one, man. I listened to that. It's a very deep one. And yeah. like, it's interesting you mentioned Arctic Monkeys earlier. Like, obviously, that's where I'm near to where I'm from, you know, up north <laughs> in England. Yeah. Like, Arctic Monkeys, it's interesting that, you know, like, they've become such a... I don't think when you live up here, like you live in the north, you don't think like how actual influential you are. You always see Arctic Monkeys, there are, there are, you know, the R's, the northern, there is, but like, they're yeah. not like they're international, like they're massive. And, and it's interesting that you, you're putting them into your music as well and things like that. And, there's so yeah, much yeah. stuff going on. I could hear different sounds, different influences that you you obviously take, and there was so much stuff going on in that EP. I couldn't really describe it really. Like if yeah, know, yeah. genre. It's sometimes like I think the best thing to say is just music. There's no point putting. Sometimes there's no point putting labels on things, is there? Every time. Yeah, no. Yeah. Like there's a few like Bunny and stuff, but like pure pop songs really. And then you've got stuff like Cave In, which is just like acoustic ballad. And then Forever and Always is like another like pop rap song, I guess. And then the middle two, True Romance and Angels Are Waiting, are a bit more like, bit more kind of the identifiable. Like they're kind of like emo rap, like upbeat emo rap. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. Cool. I know you've got a recent single. I noticed that PD the Saint. He's one. I know him actually. I noticed you two were friends like online and stuff. Like I know he's remixed it. It's called I Saw yeah, Your yeah, Face yeah. in the Rain Again. So just talk about that, man. I don't think I've listened to that one fully yet, but just talk to people about your new song. So I wrote that song, I want to say, October, November, maybe. Um, and Sean, my guy, just sent me the beat. And I was on the toilet when he sent it, actually. <laughs> and um, I was just on the toilet, listening to the beat, and the vocal line already come to my head, like, I texted him back, like, I've got this song written already. And I just dropped the lyrics down while I was on the toilet. And then and then went to my room the next day and just recorded the song. It's kind of, it's a different sound for me. Like, it's very, very slow and moody and melodic and atmospheric. Um, and... Yeah, so so I wasn't I wasn't too sure about releasing it. I was a bit like, oh, are people gonna like this? Mm. <clears throat> like, do people prefer my up tempo kind of like poppier, like upbeat songs, or do they are they gonna like this? Because it was I don't know, I was just a bit worried. And then the day released, 
it got onto New Music Friday on Spotify, nice. which I was like, it was my first ever editorial playlist. So I was like, Jesus, like, I, I was just so, I was ecstatic. I was like, finally, this year's going to be good. And then today it just got added to Fresh Finds UK on Spotify, which is another huge playlist. So it's basically already my su most successful song yet in terms of like the first week of streams and like Spotify and like follower growth and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm pretty, pretty riding a high right now from how well it's doing. So it, it kind of and that kind of thing shows me like oh people my fans are gonna like my music whatever kind of vibe it is like if they like me i'm sure they'll like these songs do you know what i mean because it's, it's still got like the gross boy energy on each one it's just it's you know like if i don't know i just think i'm just happy people like it and i'm glad that it's doing so well and it's been added to all these spot huge Spotify playlists. Like together, like those Spotify have like 1.3 million followers. Those playlists. Wow. So, so yeah, a lot of exposure, a lot of good exposure to start off the year. Well done, man! Congratulations! Like that's thank sick. you. Well, good man. I mean, I just want to kind of wrap up and like, just want to know like what's next. But I know you mentioned you were going to mention something about a new video earlier like what's you know what what have you got coming up like music wise are you doing, doing more eps or yeah so yeah, this year is going to be fun. me and my producer have talked and we're going to work this year is going to be a a big working year so i've got my next single uh i haven't announced this yet but i'll announce it here. comes out on the i want to say 18th of february whatever friday that is 18th of february and then i have another single dropping three weeks later with a video and then and then i'm, dro I'm dropping another my second ep I haven't got a name for it yet but we've got the songs most of the songs written and then i'm going to be dropping a few more oh and actually i've got a this is an exclusive i'm dropping sometime between now and march i'm dropping an ep a joint ep with pd the saint uh and two other guys called heart blake and hiding the hurt so we're dropping like a collaboration EP, all four of us. There'll be like six songs on there. And we're kind of all spread out all over the different songs. Some songs have all four of us on there. Some have three of us, some just have two of us. So pretty excited about that. Um, and then I sh I'm releasing another, I might, might release another EP before the end of the year, kind of September, October time. And then each month I'm gonna be dropping singles. Like in lockdown, I wrote loads and loads of tunes. I've got about 20 songs. That I'm just sitting on so there's going to be a lot of gross boy music this year and more than one but probably about two or well, including the the joint EP there'll be about three three gross boy projects this year too so it's going to be a jam-packed year I like the sound of it man. I look forward to hearing it all man and like I'm, I'm a fan myself man like I instantly like liked your music when I heard it and became a fan man and I'm interested to see where you're going to go musically and everything so if people want to get at you, bro, and get your music, where can they find you, bro? So Gross Boy on Spotify and Apple Music, all that stuff. Um, and then on Instagram, at Gross Boy underscore. And then on Twitter, it's Gross Boy 6. Don't ask me why, but that's just what it is. And then, yeah, I don't really have any other. I guess I have a Facebook page, Gross Boy on Facebook, but I don't really use that. But yeah, that's where they can find me. Gross Boy underscore on Instagram. Thank you so much for your time, bro, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. We'll speak soon. Thank you yeah. Yours. yeah, speak soon. Bye bye. Catch the DJ Marky Marks podcast available exclusively on Spotify and Mixcloud. Man like Skip and General, I make some blend. <laughs> the one and only them are clear, I tell you, if you lock in and lock on. <laughs>